So tonight we have an opportunity to celebrate California Lawyers for the Arts' breadth of services and its longevity while we recognize and honor some of the people and organizations who have contributed significantly to the success of the arts in our community. CLA, now 48 years old, became statewide in 1987 when Bay Area Lawyers for the Arts joined forces with BLA LA. Now many of you know that CLA provides legal counseling for artists and arts organizations, dispute resolution services to keep people out of court, and a stellar youth internship program called Spotlight on the Arts. But did you know that CLA is expanding arts programs in correctional institutions across the country and has also launched a unique workforce development program called Designing Creative Futures for Previously Incarcerated Individuals. Well, tonight we celebrate CLA's success and longevity and thriving as a statewide organization with local and national impact. In fact, we are so fortunate that CLA's founding executive director, Hamish Sanderson, traveled from Wales to be with us this afternoon and present our first award. Hamish has a global reputation in IT law, intellectual property, arts law, public procurement, data protection, freedom of information, and alternative dispute, dispute resolution. Uh, he is a leading member of the Labour Party of Great Britain and has held numerous front rank positions during his political career in the UK. So let's welcome Hamish home to the Bay Area. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, friends. It's wonderful to be with you. This gathering of artists and lawyers and the entire arts community and legal community represented here today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I, I've got a specific job, so I'll turn to that right away. I may say a few other things later, but it's my very great pleasure and privilege to uh, introduce the first award for the, uh, the event today to the Carlin family. And I'll, I'll begin by saying that uh, a little over 300 years ago, you know, I like to begin these award ceremonies at the beginning. Um, a little over 300 years ago, the very first copyright statute uh, in the world was enacted in England, where I come from. Uh, initially, uh, in 1709, only for authors, but in 1735 for visual artists, inspired by the great painter and printmaker William Hogarth. Then for composers, songwriters, filmmakers, recording artists, and so on. So fast forward to the 1970s, when I was a, a, a young law student at, at Cambridge and started to take an interest in copyright law and the rights of artists. And by then, I think it had become abundantly clear to most people that artists who could not afford access to a lawyer, in other words, most artists for most of their careers, were not able to obtain the copyright protection that had been enacted for their benefit. Uh, and I started to look across the pond and noticed that there was a, a group called VLA, Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts, that had been set up in New York City in 1969. Uh, and it was actually my interest in that initiative that inspired me to apply for a scholarship which led me to Berkeley Law School, uh, where I arrived in the summer of 1974. And by a very happy chance, I met a group of lawyers and artists who were starting to plan a VLA-type organization in the San Francisco Bay Area. And among that group of people, was an inspirational man, a man who shared my passionate commitment to the use of law as a tool of social change, a man who shared my analysis that without access to legal services, artists would never benefit from the legal rights that were enacted for their protection, a man who had been the first director of San Francisco Neighborhood Legal Assistance Foundation and was by then a full-time painter. That man 
was Jerome Carlin. He was the natural leader of that group, the group that created Bay Area Lawyers for the Arts, Baylor. And after Baylor was incorporated the following year, he became the first president of the board. And it was my very great uh, pleasure and privilege to serve as his first executive director for the next three years. I went back to the UK in 1975. Jerry stayed on as president for several more years before he stepped down from that role. But also, crucially, from the beginning and even after he stepped down as president, Jerry secured the financial support for Baylor, then California Lawyers for the Arts, from the Carlin Family Fund. Now, sadly, Jerry is no longer with us, but his spirit lives on in California Lawyers for the Arts. But happily for us, members of the Carlin family are with us to help celebrate Jerry's legacy. Nick Carlin is here, a noted arts lawyer and performer, currently playing the cello professionally, among all his other artistic activities. Nancy Carlin, yeah, give a, give a wave. You'll come up to the platform shortly. Nancy Carlin, a noted actor, director, teacher in the Bay Area. And, of course, Joy Carlin, Jerry's wife of 59 years, star of stage and screen and a leading theatre director. So it's my great honour to invite Joy and the other members of the Carlin family who are here to step up to the podium and to accept this award in the honour of the Carlin family. Please come and join me. theater as my daughter is, and uh, I, I said, um, well, what do artists, painters have uh, that what we have, which is uh, an actor's equity uh, organization, and I think that that inspired Jerry to say, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't have anything like that, why don't we? And I think that that was the spark that lit the light <laughs> for, uh, for the, this artist group, which you are all a part of now. So, um, so I feel very much a part of that too, being that kind of a unionized person. I think it's a great idea. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Enjoy. everyone. I hope everyone's filled up on burrito. I can't wait to eat after this. It looks delicious. But um, I want to say that um, the mayor, as everyone know, has, knows, has been branded as the arts mayor since her work at the African American Art and Culture Complex. But very similar to her, and one of the reasons why we became friends many years ago is I too um, is, am steeped in the arts. I was a performing artist for many years. I have so many things in common with Hamish, um, one of which I lived in the UK where he lives now, and I told him I performed in Merthyr Tidville in Wales, which is not many times I can tell someone that and they know what I'm talking about. Um, but as a working artist, as a singer-songwriter, I, at the time, there's no blueprint to being an artist. When you start out, you're so busy and so consumed with creating that you barely have time to know about how to read your contracts how to get health care, how to get your royalties, what are royalties? And so organizations like California Lawyers for the Arts are so powerful because they help artists navigate all these atypical things that many don't learn in school. So I want to say personally to Hamish, as I read this proclamation or portions of it, I won't bore you with the whole thing, um, that I thank you for your service. I thank you for being a part of this movement to empower artists with the services provided by California Lawyers for the Arts. Um, and I just want to say that the city and county of San Francisco takes time to recognize individuals like you who have made remarkable contributions to the vitality of our city. Um, and the incredible work that you've done that truly represents San Francisco's values um, at their best. So a little bit about Hamish, um, in addition to what you've already heard. 
Hamish's outstanding contribution to the arts community of San Francisco Bay Area as the co-founder and first executive director of Bay Area Lawyers for the Arts from 1974, a nonprofit which, similar to as California Lawyers for the Arts, continues to provide free legal services to artists and arts organizations throughout the state of California. That's very powerful. And so today, the mayor wanted me to deliver this proclamation on our behalf and proclaim that she, Mayor London Free, on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, make April 30th, 2022, Hamish Sanderson Day in the city and county of San Francisco. Thank you so much, Tara. Well, you may not believe this, but I didn't expect to make two speeches today, but it's a, it's a, real, it's a real privilege and an honor to be recognized by the mayor of, of this city. Um, and I feel a bit diffident about um, accepting it because my part was easy in, the, in those years, in the 70s. Uh, and those that kept this organization going in the following years had the, had the hard part. And I, and I say that because back in those days with Jerry and others, we enjoyed very favorable circumstances. And I just wanted to mention those because I think, I think they're still relevant. Um, it's always easier to start a new organization. You know about the private foundations that provide three years of seed funding, and that's great. It's what happens after the end of the three years that's, that's challenging. Um, but of course, I also benefited from the inspirational leadership of Jerry Carlin during those years, which I've already referred to, and very favorable political circumstances. I mentioned two things in particular, um, they both, Go back to the war on poverty of LBJ. How many people talk about that uh, today? Uh, well, some of us haven't forgotten about it. The idea of equal access to legal services for all, uh, the idea of public support for the arts, which led to the creation of the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities. And those two public policy assumptions in the United States came together to underpin the case for, for Baylor in the 1970s that everyone, everyone has a right of equal access to legal help, even if they cannot afford it. Uh, and that includes artists, and that the state has a role, federal and state and, and local, in securing that equal access. Uh, and, and secondly, that art does deserve public support as well as private patronage. Art and artistic activities from the federal government, from the state government, from the local level. Uh, we also had the president of the LA in New York, which I referred to earlier, um, and they were able to show that every dollar, this is something for arts funders in the room to take note of, every dollar spent on Baylor then was multiplied 30 times in terms of the value of the volunteer services provided by the attorneys. So that's a hell of a multiplier and a great return on investment. So funders should be aware of that. Um, and I believe that those things that I've just mentioned are still true today, but I'm not sure that the political support we had in the 70s is still there today. You will tell me whether that's true or not, and if it's not true, we've got to fight to get it back. So I would say to the politicians who are listening today, uh, there's no point enacting artists' rights or performers' rights, uh, copyright at the federal level, resale royalties at the state level, or other rights at the local level, without supporting the organizations like CLA, which will enable artists to enforce those rights. In other words, no point willing the end without willing the means. So, I thank you for honoring me. I thank the mayor, I thank Tyra, uh, but I salute those who have followed. Uh, the boards of directors, the volunteer attorneys, the staff, especially Alma. Uh, the, the, uh, I, I, I salute the Carlin family, as I've already uh, done, who have kept uh, California Lawyers for the Arts going in much more challenging circumstances than I faced 48 years ago. And speaking of 48 years, uh, my partner and I, Edwina, came over for this event to learn it was the 48th anniversary, and it occurred to us that we should start planning biggest and best party ever for our 50th anniversary. Thank you all very much.
you. Good evening. Um, it's very exciting for me to be here today. Um, as the MC previously mentioned, I am actually an alumni on Spotlight on the Arts. I've known Jill and Alma since I was 13 years old, and they still work very hard. Um, so, and it's also very exciting because I get to present this next award um, to one of my members. So the Chinese Cultural Center is an arts anchor rooted in Chinatown with the mission to uplift underserved communities and be a voice for equality through arts and education. They are dedicated to presenting bold art at the intersection of social transformation and community impact. As leaders in the community, they play an important role to nurture young voices of color and the next generation of cultural leaders in the arts. CCC's We the Future initiative champions the role of arts in community recovery, social justice, and equity. Young artists and youth play a big role in their work to change the narrative and champion their own stories through their communities. In the museum field where leadership is 90% white and male, this is especially important to build equity in the arts and our next generation. So now I would like to welcome up board member Michael Moon and Deputy Director Eleanor Fernandez. Thank you everyone. Thank you Kai for that introduction. Chinese Culture Center is so honored to accept this award and is proud of our team of strong Asian American women leaders. I had a squad of really strong females there and I want everyone to know that. So California Lawyers for the Arts and the Spotlight program is very important to CCC. For over 10 years through this program, we have nurtured youth to learn about arts and community and through that become empowered to be stewards of and a bold voice in our communities. As a long-standing organization, CCC understands our future hope is in our youth and next generation. Our chief curator, Hoi Leung, was an alumni of this program and also a Lowell High School alumni, as well as myself, and we are grateful to CLA. Through a combination of art experiences, she has gained the tools and experience to be a strong Asian American voice and strong curator of color. We are proud to partner with CLA to uplift underserved communities and be a voice of equality and see the need for more opportunities like this in San Francisco and the Bay Area and to build the next generation of diverse leaders and to nurture young people and those who are multi-talented from immigrant, working class, diverse backgrounds to have different opportunities and experiences. We would like to invite everyone to come to CCC to see our exhibitions, public festivals, artists in residence, and youth art programs in the fall. Thank you, CLA, for this incredible honor. We look forward to partnering with you for another decade and more. Thank you so much. So honored. Founded in 1982, Adobe is one of the largest and most diversified software companies in the world. Adobe's legal team has been generous in their support of artists through CLA's Legal Services Program. Led by Byron Hing, Director and Associate General Counsel at Adobe, 43 different Adobe legal professionals have participated in seven different CLA legal clinics since 2019. They have provided expert pro bono consultations to CLA clients faced with problems ranging from trademark, copyright, and patent to employment issues. In addition, we're grateful to Adobe for donating Creative Cloud software to CLE, CLA, sorry, as well as technical assistance to CLA staff in order to improve management of the organization's software platforms to achieve a better interface and public use. Please join me in thanking Byron Hing and his team for their wonderful support of our clients, as well as their support of CLA. Hey everyone, so thank you so much for just this honor and this award. Um, on behalf of Adobe, I wanna say thank you for just the opportunity to partner with such a great organization. 
And as I sat here tonight and just reflected upon everything, you know, from founders to kind of over the years and just, the, just how much of an impact this organization has had, I just felt really lucky to be able to be a part of it, right? And I think I can speak for the whole Adobe community when I say that. I think Adobe in general really cares about creatives and artists in general. I mean, it's our, it's our um, desire as a company to help empower everybody to tell their own story. And uh, we're just grateful to be able to work with an organization that's done so much good for artists and, that, and we look forward to partnering with you for many years to come. Thank you. And on behalf of the United States Patent and Trademark Office, I say it's, a, it's an honor to be here today with you all. Um, and I just wanted to mention briefly the program um, that we're here to honor. Um, you know, back just 10 years ago, uh, a law passed that created the uh, patent pro bono program um, called the California Inventors Assistance Program. Uh, the California Lawyers for the Arts was selected as the statewide administrator of the California Inventors Assistance Program. Uh, this program connects low-income inventors uh, with registered licensed patent attorneys um, at no cost or low cost to help them navigate the patent process. Um, to date, <clears throat> over 41% of those who have received assistance through the patent pro bono program have been uh, identified as female, uh, and that compares to the, frankly, abysmally low 12% of overall patent applicants uh, that identify as female. So the individuals that you're seeing on the screen here each have donated over 50 hours of their time to help those navigate the patent process. So on behalf of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, I want to thank those here, and we look forward to continuing to work uh, with CLA. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, great to uh, be in this esteemed group of folks, uh, and um, it also uh, brings me back to um, my former life when I was a political, I was a city council member in the city of Minneapolis, so uh, to present this award to Supervisor Mandelman tonight is an extreme uh, pleasure and honor for me and I'm humbled to do it. So my name is Ralph Remington, as, as stated. Uh, I'm the Director of Cultural Affairs with the San Francisco Arts Commission. And it's my distinct honor to be here with the California Lawyers for the Arts this evening for the 14th Annual Artistic License Awards and to present this next award. Since stepping into this role a year and a half ago, I've had the pleasure of working closely with the recipient of this next award on numerous occasions and I commend them for their leadership and support of the arts, not only within the district they represent, but across San Francisco. Their accomplishments are many but some wonderful achievements to note include their continuous advocacy and funding support of LGBTQ arts and culture organizations and projects, authoring legislation to create the Castro LBTQ dist cultural district, and declaring the Lesbian Gay Freedom Band the official band of San Francisco. They are also committed uh, to expanding the number of LGBTQ cultural sites included in our city's list of historic landmarks and has pushed for new and innovative ways to showcase the arts, including activating and showcasing art in vacant storefronts. They are an adamant supporter of the new Conservatory Theater Center's Youth Aware Program, work working to promote uh, health and wellness education in schools to build awareness and understanding of equity and inclusion, and has successfully restored multi-year city funding for various arts programs, including CLA's Spotlight on the Arts. Supervisor Raphael Mandeman has worked tirelessly to support the arts, not only just within District 8, but citywide, and for that, we thank you for all that you do and all that you continue to do and all that you will do in the future. So congratulations, Supervisor uh, Mandelman, and we are honored uh, to present you with this award.
lucky are we to have Ralph Remington in San Francisco, and what a weird time to start a new job. But, um, but, but thank you for being here. This is so cute. A little license plate. Um, well, I, I think I, I, we're nearing the end of the program, so uh, folks are going to be able to go back to enjoying each other, and I won't talk for too terribly long. But I do want to just say um, a, a few nice things about, about Alma Robinson. Um, who has been um, someone who I have admired for like, I think, 20 years at this point. Um, uh, I, I, I'm getting older. Um, we're all getting older. Um, and just, I'm, I, I have seen the good that Alma has done in the world and her other half, Toye, um, at California Lawyers for the Arts, in Alma's case, and in all sorts of ways uh, for Toye. And um, you two really are a gift to San Francisco and the Bay Area and the world. And so. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly honored to get this, but I also am honored to be able to say some nice things about you. I think, Calif I, I think um, California Lawyers for the Arts is one of those organizations that does so much more than anyone knows. I mean, I've been aware of some. I mean, the name suggests some of what you do. But when you look at the list of programs and projects and helping artists, but in so many different ways, um, mediation and all the various legal needs that lawyers may have, advocacy, youth, um, internships, uh, helping folks who are re-entering after re-entering society after incarceration. Um, I mean, the list is long and it's, a, and it's so impressive. And so, um, you know, uh, Hamish, um, fellow Berkeley Law graduate, um, uh, you know, it's, it's great to be here with you and to meet you and to learn about, you know, what you and other folks were able to do in the 70s. And I do think it is remarkable to think about all that, that set of organizations that was able to be started in the 70s with these, with these grand ambitions for a more just, equal, and, and fair society. And to Alma and the others who have managed to keep that work going, um, as Hamish was saying, we're so grateful to you. So. I love it. Thank you. So congratulations to all of our honorees tonight for their incredible work. Um, also, a shout out and thank you to our um, musicians, Jack Bowers and Reggie Austin, for that wonderful performance earlier today. And a thank you to everyone for being here and for celebrating with us on this very special night. I'm going to turn it over now to Alma and Gloria for some closing remarks. Um, please join us in congratulating them once again. We also want to express our heartfelt thanks to the CLA Board of Directors for their consistent stewardship of the organization and the CLA staff for their efforts on behalf of the arts community. Um, we'd be remiss if we didn't offer very special thanks to Toy and Moses, to Lisa Cami, and to Jill Royson, all of whom were absolutely instrumental in putting together this evening's program. So thank you all so much. Um, and also a very, very special thank you to all of the volunteers and interns and affiliated attorneys and mediators and arbitrators, all of whom keep our programs running seamlessly. Um, and of course, a very special thank you to our executive director, Alma Robinson. <laughs> Established California Lawyers for the Arts as a national model. Thank you, Alma, for everything. Thank you.